Want to master grammar so you can speak properly, express yourself better, and understand more? In this video, I'll show you how to master grammar with our lessons and learning program. Let's begin. Number one, listen to the lesson conversations and explanations. In every lesson, you learn a conversation. Then, our teachers break down every word and grammar rule. So you're actually learning grammar rules in the context of conversations, and you can easily see how they're used. Once you're done, review the conversation again and again to remember what you've learned. Number two, read the bonus explanations and tutorials. With the lesson notes, you get extra grammar explanations and examples that are not presented in the lesson. After you're done with the lesson, read the lesson notes for extra review. You can even save them as PDFs so that you can access them anytime. Number three, leave a comment on the lesson. Once you've learned a grammar point, be sure to use it. Leave a comment in the comment section. Write some example sentences for practice. Our teachers will review your comment and give you feedback. Number four, unlock even more grammar lessons. If you want to find all of the grammar lessons available, visit our lesson library. Under category, choose grammar. You'll get all of the pathways and lessons dedicated to helping you learn and master sentence patterns and grammar points. So, if you're ready to finally learn a new language the fast, fun, and easy way, sign up for your free lifetime account by clicking on the link in the description. Signing up takes less than 30 seconds, and you'll start speaking from your very first lesson. If you enjoyed these tips, hit the like button, share it with anyone who's trying to learn a new language, and subscribe to our channel. We release new videos every week. I'll see you next time. Bye! Hi! Welcome to Introduction to Hindi. My name is Alicia, and I'm joined by... Hi everyone, I'm Venus. In this lesson, you'll learn the basics of Hindi grammar. Did you know that Hindi doesn't use articles? Really? That means you don't have to worry about where to put a, and where to add an, and where to use the? Yes. Doesn't that make things easier? It definitely does. What about gender? How is it indicated in Hindi? Firstly, there is no he or she in Hindi. You can use the same pronoun for both genders. Great! But the verbs do change depending on the gender of the person speaking and the gender of the person you are speaking to. Oh, that is quite complicated. Not really. It is usually quite simple. If a verb uses E at the end, it means it is feminine. But if it uses A at the end, it means it is masculine. We will go through a few examples later in this lesson to find out just how easy it is. Also, in Hindi, there is no neutral gender. Every object is either masculine or feminine. Yes, so an auto rickshaw is masculine and a bus is feminine. But there isn't a need to worry about getting the gender of all objects correct in the beginning. This is something you'll catch on to as you go on learning Hindi. How about we look at an example of verbs and how they change based on gender? Let's begin with the verb to do. Sure. In Hindi, to do is karna. If you are female, you would say karti. And if you are male, you would say karta. So, the last vowel changes. It is E for females and A for males. Yes, the same goes when you address someone. If they are female, use E at the end of the verb. And if they are male, use A at the end. Okay, so we don't have to worry about articles, we don't have to worry about pronouns being gender-based, but we have to be concerned about verbs being based on gender? Yes, that's right. How about we go on and take a look at some personal pronouns now? In Hindi, the first person singular pronoun is me. And it doesn't matter whether you're female or male, you can use the same pronoun? Yes, the first person plural noun is hum. 
While there's only one first-person singular pronoun in Hindi, there are three second-person singular pronouns, right? Yes, they are tu, tum, and aap. Tu is used in a very informal way, something you will use with a very close friend. Tum is also informal, but not as much as tu. It is something you may want to use with a friend, a close colleague, your kids, your siblings, or even your spouse. But aap is the formal form of address. It is something that you would like to use at your office while addressing your parents, strangers, or your elders. The interesting thing is that you can use tum and aap as the second person plural too. But generally, a word like all or people is added to tum and aap to make the second person plural. So, you could say tum log or aap log, where log means people. Or you could say tum sab or aap sab, where sab means all. Good. So, we learned two more words here for people and all. Yes, log means people and sub means all. Let's check the third person singular now. For he, she, it, this, we use ye. And for he, she, it, that, we use ve. The plural will be ye for these and ve for those. So, how about we try and make some sentences now? Sure, we can. But before we actually go on to forming sentences, we will need to know a little more about the various forms of the verb to be. Of course, to be is an important verb not only in Hindi but also in English. Without knowing about how to use it, it's very difficult to form sentences. Imagine having no am, are, were, was, have, or has in English. There would be no sentences. So, what is to be in Hindi? It is hona. How would we say I am in Hindi? For I am, hona changes to hu. Main hu. We are becomes hum. Hum hai. Where hona changes to hai. With tu, you use hai. And tum, you use ho. And with aap, you use hai. That means the to be form is the same for plural and for respectful address. Yes, it is he. Does it change depending on whether a man speaks or a woman? No, it doesn't. We have three versions of hona, and these are hu, he, he. Great, so now we can make a sentence. Definitely. How would you say, I am Alicia? That would be, Main Alicia Hu. So, the order of the words is, I, Alicia, am, or pronoun, noun, verb. That means, unlike English, the noun comes before the verb in Hindi. Yes, indeed. Let's try out a few more sentences. How about, I am good? How would we say that in Hindi? Main acha hu if you are male. Main achi hu if you are female. Did you notice how for males the word good becomes acha and for females it becomes achi? Yes, indeed. What about the plural version of the Hindi word for good? That would be achi. This would also be used if you are using a respectful address for a male. Aap achhe hain. Generally, the respectful form when addressing males is the same as the plural version. That makes things quite simple. But good is an adjective. Does that mean that all adjectives also change depending on the gender? Not always, but sometimes they do. You will pick this up as you practice the language more and more. Okay, but what about past tense? Was becomes tha, or the, or thi. So, how would you say, how are you? Aap kaise hain, or aap kaisi hain. 
And how would you answer that? I am good if you are male. Or I am good if you are female. Wow, we learned a lot about Hindi grammar today. Let's recap what we've learned in this lesson. In this lesson, we learned that there are no articles in Hindi. The pronouns are not gender-based, but the verbs are never neutral. They're always masculine or feminine. We also learned that you can use three variations of the word you, depending on whether you want to use a formal, informal, or a little more informal version. We also learned how the verb to be changes depending on whether the sentence is singular, plural, formal, or informal. And of course, we also learned how to say, how are you? and how to answer this very important question. We just learned the basics of Hindi grammar. In the next lesson, we'll learn the basics of Hindi writing. See you in the next lesson. Bye! Dhanyavad and Namaste! Want to speak real Hindi from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at hindipod101.com. You probably already have language learning goals, but the real key to success is to make the right goals. In this video, I'll show you how with five tips to stop wasting your time and start learning. Hi everyone, Alicia here. In this video, I'll teach you five tips to stop procrastinating and keep your motivation for learning a new language. Some of these are study methods, and some will be general ways that you can keep your study motivation up. While these tips are for studying a language, some of them are good for other things in your life too, such as new challenges or other types of goals. But before we start, don't forget to click the link in the description to get your bundle of PDF cheat sheets, including survival phrases, romantic lines, learning tips, absolutely free. Now, you probably already have some goals you're trying to achieve when it comes to your language learning progress. While achieving these goals is important, making sure you make the right goals is the real key to success. The very first tip is to set SMART goals. SMART is an acronym, meaning each letter in the word stands for another word. The earliest known reference to SMART goals was in an article written by George T. Doran for a 1981 issue of the Management Review Academic Journal. The acronym varies depending on its use, but each letter generally stands for some criterion that helps with effective goal setting. For our purposes, let's define SMART goals as follows. The S stands for specific. Your goals should target a specific area for improvement. Our natural tendency is to have a goal that's very general. If your goal isn't specific enough, you'll lack the focus and proper direction you need to achieve your goals. So S is for specific. M stands for measurable. Your goals should be quantifiable. They should be able to indicate progress in some way. You have to be able to track your progress, otherwise you won't know if you're getting any closer to your goal. As you see yourself getting closer and closer to your goal, your motivation will go up. So your goals need to be measurable. A stands for achievable. Your goals have to be achievable. Many people want to become fluent in their target language immediately. However, this goal is unrealistic. Your goals have to be achievable. If your goal is too challenging for your current level, it will only demotivate you when you aren't where you think you should be. Instead, think about what results can realistically be achieved given your level, your resources, and any constraints, such as time. So make sure that your goal is actually achievable. R stands for relevant. Your goals may be specific, they may be measurable, and they may be achievable, but are they actually relevant to what you want to achieve? Don't just do a lot of things. If you're focused on improving your speaking skills in your target language, make sure that you spend your time having conversations with others. Make sure you're doing the right things so that your efforts actually bring you closer to your goal instead of just giving you more work. T stands for timely. You need to set a deadline for your goals. If you don't specify when you plan to achieve the result you've set for yourself, it's very easy to put off the task. 
You can delay it until tomorrow, the next week, or the next month, and at this rate, you'll never get things done. So your goal must have an end date. So remember, tip number one is to set SMART goals. Specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and timely. So for example, a goal you could make is registering for a challenging test, a test that's a little bit beyond your current level. I hate failing, so if I register for a challenging test, I'm motivated to study because I don't want to fail. This is a good example of a SMART goal because tests are specific. There are tons of different tests focused on speaking, grammar, and comprehension. Pick a test that can measure the specific area in which you'd like to grow. Measurable. Tests are measurable. Every test measures your performance to some degree. Whether it's a total count of right and wrong answers or a simple pass or fail, every test measures your performance. Tests are achievable. There's an important detail to remember here though. Find a test that is achievable for you. If you're a beginner, then the most advanced test is probably not right for you. Find one that's meant for beginners. Then after that one, work your way up to more advanced tests in the future. Tests are relevant. Most, if not all, language tests are designed to ensure that you're capable of performing to a set standard in your target language. Lower level tests are designed to ensure that you can handle the most essential aspects of your target language. But there are tests for all levels, including higher education entry exams that could be difficult, even for native speakers. Pick the one that's right for you. And finally, tests are timely. If your test is completed in a physical location, then this one is obvious. You have to be at that spot at the set time, ready to take the test. There's no wiggle room. But even online tests will most likely have a deadline for you to complete them. The second tip to help you stop procrastinating and to keep your motivation up is to create a diary or social media account that you can update every day. This may seem simple or even unrelated to language learning, but by creating a diary in your target language, you have the chance to actually create in the language itself. Creating a diary is also a great way to practice writing in your target language. Another method is to create a social media account, which gives you the chance to connect with other people who are working toward the same goals as you. Maybe they can even give you feedback on your writing. If you're following people online who regularly share good resources, those can be really helpful for you too. It lets you find new tools that can encourage and motivate you, especially if they relate to some of your other interests, such as music or books in other languages. This is a really good way to take a few minutes every day to work towards your goal, without it even seeming like work. The third tip is to focus on understanding a specific TV show or movie. Try to watch a movie in your target language without any subtitles, or try to understand your favorite TV show that's in your target language. If you don't already have a goal like this, it can be a fun way to practice. If your friends often talk about a particular TV show, it could be a good way to study and a fun way to keep your motivation up together. Plus, TV shows and movies often use the language in a way that's vastly different from the conversations provided in traditional textbooks. So you often get to hear different vocabulary choices. It's a very powerful way to learn a language and end up sounding more like a native speaker. Tip number four is to enroll in a regular language course. Register for something you have to go to or you have to participate in regularly, meaning every week or two times a week or maybe even every day. The point of this is it's something that gives you a pattern to follow. Forming a study habit will help you progress very quickly. It will make it easier for you to achieve your language learning goals. Once you form the habit, you won't even have to think about starting each time. It'll just be natural. Have something that you must take responsibility for. You'll be more motivated to continue if there are others, especially classmates or a teacher watching you progress. Look for resources inside your community. And if there are no opportunities there, look for things digitally. You can find many of our videos on YouTube, on Facebook, and of course, our entire video and audio lesson library on our website. The lessons on our website also come with assignment courses, so you can test your knowledge. The last tip is to make your goal public. Share your goal. Tell people about your goal. For example, if you want to give a business presentation in your target language this year, then tell your colleagues or your boss about it. Some people may find what you're doing interesting, and they can support you. This kind of pressure can help push people forward who have trouble motivating themselves alone. 
By telling others about your goal, you feel more accountable. Because you told somebody that you were planning on doing something, there's an underlying sense of guilt if you don't accomplish the task. You may feel that you have failed your peers in some way, even if there's no direct pressure from them. Using this technique, you can push yourself into moving forward toward your goal, especially at times when you feel the least motivated. And that brings us to the end of our five tips to stop wasting time and start learning a language. We've talked a lot about how to set goals for yourself and think about new challenges. First, I told you about creating SMART goals. Remember, SMART goals are specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and timely. Registering for a test is a great example of a SMART goal. Next, we talked about keeping a diary or social media account in your target language. Start doing it right now, even if you're still a beginner. Then, I suggested that you focus on understanding a specific TV show or movie. Pick something in your target language that you really love, because you may need to watch it over and over again until it all makes sense to you. And next, we talked about enrolling in a regular language course. This will give you something concrete that you must take responsibility for. Finally, make your goal public. Tell someone about your learning goals to keep you accountable for them. You're much less likely to abandon your studies if you have friends asking you about your progress. I hope that these are useful tips that you can use to reach your language learning goals. And before we go, let me remind you to download tons of free PDF lessons to learn the language the fast, fun, and easy way. Just click the link in the description. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up and share it with anyone who may find it useful. Do you have any good tips that you've used to help you reach your goals? Share them in the comments. Thanks very much for watching and see you next time. How are your Hindi listening skills? First, you'll see an image and hear a question. Next comes a short dialogue. Listen carefully and see if you can answer correctly. We'll show you the answer at the end. Are you ready? एक लड़का अपनी डायरी से पढ़ रहा है लड़के ने दिन में सबसे पहले क्या किया आज मौसम बहुत अच्छा था मैं दोपहर में पूल में तैरा और फिर शाम को पिक्चर देखने गया मैंने पूरी सुबह पढ़ाई भी की आज काफी अच्छा दिन था लड़के ने दिन में सबसे पहले क्या किया एक लड़का अपनी डायरी से पढ़ रहा है लड़के ने दिन में सबसे पहले क्या किया आज मौसम बहुत अच्छा था मैं दोपहर में पूल में तैरा और फिर शाम को पिक्चर देखने गया मैंने पूरी सुबह पढ़ाई भी की आज काफी अच्छा दिन था एक आदमी अपनी कंपनी की सेल्स संपादन के बारे में मीटिंग में प्रस्तुति कर रहा है वह कौन से दो आकृति अपने प्रस्तुति के लिए इस्तेमाल कर रहा है दिए गए कागज को देखिए बाएं तरफ की आकृति हमारी कंपनी की पिछले तीन सालों की संपादन और इस साल की सेल्स पूर्वानुमान दिखाती है दाएं की चार्ट इस साल के अक्टूबर तक की हर महीने की सेल्स दिखाती है अभी बाई आकृति की तरफ देखिए इसके अनुसार सेल पिछले तीन सालों से बढ़ रही है हम ऐसे ही सेल बढ़ाते रहे तो इस साल की सेल कुल मिलाकर पिछले साल से ज्यादा होगी अब दाएं की चार्ट को देखिए दाएं की आकृति दिखाती है कि हमारे अप्रैल और अगस्त के कैंपेन काफी सफल रहे अच्छा लेकिन मई और सितंबर में कैंपेन के बाद सेल्स कम हो गई हाँ लेकिन इस तरह का पलटाव टाला नहीं जा सकता मेरा अनुमान है कि इस वर्ष की सेल पिछले साल की तुलना में ज्यादा होगी अगर हम सेल इसी तरह बढ़ाते रहे वह कौन से दो आकृति अपने प्रस्तुति के लिए इस्तेमाल कर रहा है एक आदमी अपनी कंपनी की सेल्स संपादन के बारे में मीटिंग में प्रस्तुति कर रहा है वह कौन से दो आकृति अपने प्रस्तुति के लिए इस्तेमाल कर रहा है दिए गए कागज को देखिए बाएं तरफ की आकृति हमारी कंपनी की पिछले तीन सालों की संपादन और इस साल की सेल्स पूर्वानुमान दिखाती है दाएं की चार्ट इस साल के अक्टूबर 
तक की हर महीने की सेल्स दिखाती है अभी बाई आकृति की तरफ देखिए इसके अनुसार सेल पिछले तीन सालों से बढ़ रही है हम ऐसे ही सेल बढ़ाते रहे तो इस साल की सेल कुल मिलाकर पिछले साल से ज्यादा होगी अब दाएं की चार्ट को देखिए दाएं की आकृति दिखाती है कि हमारे अप्रैल और अगस्त के कैंपेन काफी सफल रहे अच्छा लेकिन मई और सितंबर में कैंपेन के बाद सेल्स कम हो गई हाँ लेकिन इस तरह का पलटाव टाला नहीं जा सकता मेरा अनुमान है कि इस वर्ष की सेल पिछले साल की तुलना में ज्यादा होगी अगर हम सेल इसी तरह बढ़ाते रहे Want to speak real Hindi from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at hindipod101.com. Want to finally learn Hindi the fast, fun and easy way? In this video, I'll show you the top 10 ways to get started. So, let's begin. Number 1. Take your very first lesson. Access any audio or video lesson on hindipod101.com and just press the play button to get started. Don't have an account? Don't worry. Just go to the sign up page to create an account. It takes less than 30 seconds and it's free. We have thousands of audio and video lessons covering a variety of topics like grammar, pronunciation, listening and reading. Just click on the play button on any lesson and start learning. Number 2. Read along with the lesson. You can read along with the lesson notes or lesson transcript. These come with every lesson. The lesson notes provide you with the dialogue for the scene taught in the lesson, along with translations, a more in-depth explanation of the grammar and culture, and even vocab and sample sentences. The lesson transcript is the full word-for-word -word transcript of everything you hear in the lesson, and the dialogue study tool provides you with the audio for the lesson dialogue, along with the translations. Number three, shadowing. Shadowing is a tested learning technique where you repeat what you hear. This is a great way to start speaking in minutes and practice speaking in general. If you're listening along with the lesson audio or dialogue, be sure to shadow along the way. Number 4. Use the dialogue study tool to master the conversation. Here, you get the line-by-line -line breakdown of the conversation demonstrated in the lesson. Listen and repeat until you've mastered each line. Do this until you've mastered the entire conversation. Number 5. Use the voice recorder to perfect your pronunciation and speaking. In the dialogue study tool, you'll find a microphone icon next to each line. Click on it to record your voice. Then, compare it with the native speakers. Listen and adjust your pronunciation until you match that of the native speaker. Number 6. Review vocab with the lesson vocabulary list. Vocabulary words are the building blocks of language. You can save vocab words taught in each lesson by clicking on Add to Word Bank. Want to drill the words with smart flashcards instead? Just click on Add to Flashcard Deck to do so. Number 7. Listen to the review track. If you've studied an audio lesson before, just listen to the review track so that you don't have to listen through the entire lesson again. This is a great way to reinforce the material that you've learned and it's great to have on the go. Just access any audio lesson and click on the download icon. Then click review to download the review track. Number 8. Review with quizzes after the lesson. Once you're confident enough with the material taught in the lesson, be sure to take the quiz to test your newfound knowledge. Take the review questions and answer true or false for each one. Or take the writing questions and input your answer. Remember to check the answers by clicking on the check answers button. Number 9. Participate and leave a comment. The best way to master what you've learned is to use it. Join the community of learners by leaving a comment below at the end of every lesson. Our dedicated teachers will check your responses to correct you on any mistakes or provide you with helpful study tips and advice. And finally, number 10. Move on to the next lesson. Done with a lesson? Mark the lesson as complete. You can see your overall learning progress on your dashboard. If you particularly enjoyed the lesson, mark the lesson as favorite so that you can come back to it later at any time. Click on the forward arrow to move on to the next lesson and continue learning.
If you enjoyed these tips, hit the like button, share it with anyone who's trying to learn Hindi, and subscribe to our channel. We release new videos every week. Remember, you can sign up to hindipod101.com by clicking on the link in the description. Sign up takes less than 30 seconds, and it's free. I'll see you next time. Bye! Hi everyone, welcome to your monthly review, the monthly show on language learning, where you discover new learning strategies, motivational tips, new study tools, resources, and where we show off learners like you speaking the language. That is, if you're brave enough to become language learning famous. All the materials mentioned in this video are available for you now on our website. Click the link in the description to sign up for your free lifetime account and start speaking in minutes. Okay, today's topic is the 10 habits of highly effective language learners. So, what do successful language learners, people who set language goals and actually hit them, do differently? And are you doing any of these things already? Let's get into it. You'll discover 10 powerful habits and how to apply them. I'll give you specific step-by-step -step examples. You can use these whether you're learning with our program or any other resource, a textbook, an app, or some audio program. Let's start with the first and most important one. Habit number one, set small, measurable goals with deadlines. Why small goals? Well, say for example, you set big, vague goals, like I wanna be fluent someday, and maybe you buy a textbook, you read the first chapter, then you start wondering if you're getting any better. You start worrying you'll never be fluent, and you give up. If you do this, you need to start setting small, measurable goals. For example, learn 100 words in a month or speak one minute of conversation, or do 30 of our audio lessons in one month. Deadline, November 30th. Okay, habit number two, create a routine, because your routine is what will bring your goals to reality. This goes back to the first habit. Again, if you set a goal like doing 30 lessons in one month, you need to do one lesson a day and spend 15 minutes studying. Now you have a routine to stick to, one lesson a day, 15 minutes. Next, decide when and where you'll do it. Why? So you can make time. Make a mental note that this time is language time. And, this is important, say no to other things. Your language goals and dreams take first priority. Next, habit number three, don't cram. Instead of cramming or forcing yourself to learn for one or five hours, start small. Cramming may have worked for you with studying for tests, but language learning is a marathon, not a sprint. So if you do five hours now, you'll burn yourself out. You'll hate the learning, and that's not good. That's how you fail at your goals and dreams. But if you can do five to 15 minutes a day, every day, learning won't be overwhelming, and you'll be successful in the long run. So how do you create this habit? If you've set your small, measurable goal and routine, you're good to go. Habit number four, prepare lines and conversations ahead of time. If you're like most language learners, speaking is your weak point. And a lot of the time, it's because you just don't know what to say. You don't have the words in your head. This is where preparation comes in. So imagine you meet a person for the first time. What do you say to each other? Hello, how are you? What's your name? Where are you from? What are your hobbies? If you prepare these questions and answers ahead of time, you then have things to ask and say. So how do you do this? If you're learning on the website, check out our top 25 questions lessons that teach you questions and answers that we use all the time in conversations. For example, what's your name? Where are you from? How old are you? How was your weekend? Another way to prepare is to make a list of questions or phrases you want to say, then get the translations for those. The point is, if you prepare lines like, my name is, I am from, this weekend I did this, the kind of lines you use all the time, you'll always have something to say. Habit number five, get into the habit of producing output. So input is taking language in, listening and reading, and output is putting language out, so speaking and writing. The point here is, it's easy to just sit and listen and watch YouTube videos. You can listen to lessons all day long, but listening helps with listening. It won't get you speaking the language. So the easiest ways to produce output are, for speaking, repeat what you hear out loud. That's called shadowing. And for writing, write things out by hand. You can copy out our lesson dialogues or just copy the sentences out of a textbook. Habit number six, come back and review. And that's because reading something once doesn't mean it'll be in your brain forever. So this is where reviewing comes in. 
In order to master grammar, words, or phrases, you must go back and review. How do you do this? Spaced repetition flashcards are a great example of this. A lot of language learners use these because with spaced repetition, you get to see words again and again over spaced periods of time, and that improves your memory. Another simple thing you can do is download and save our lessons. Replay them later. Download our dialogue tracks. These give you just the conversation from that lesson, no translations. Make a playlist on your phone and listen as much as possible, just like with songs. Soon, you'll know tons of practical conversations by heart. Next, habit number seven, look for solutions. There's one interesting thing that separates new learners from successful learners. It's how they react when they don't understand something. Because beginners completely rely on the study tools they use, they tend to blame them too. You'll often hear that someone gave up because the textbook was too boring, or it won't help them speak. But if you realize a book won't help you speak, it's not the book's fault, is it? And if you complain that a class doesn't help you speak, but you're not raising your hand at every opportunity either, whose fault is it? So experienced learners look for solutions. Get into the habit of coming up with a solution for your problem. Habit number eight, focus on what you're good at. And you should do this because it's overall motivation. If you're generally better at speaking than writing, then you're more likely to enjoy it, which means you're more likely to continue with it. And that means it's a successful routine. Habit number nine is don't procrastinate, which is easier said than done. Most of us procrastinate. And a lot of that is a result of overthinking. Let's say you plan on studying today. So you remember, ah, I have to study, I have to study. Now you're ruining it in your head. It becomes something you have to do. It's a hassle now. But if you set a small, measurable goal and have a simple routine, spend five minutes, then you know you just need to put in five minutes and you're done. So if you want to beat procrastination, make your goals and routines easy. And number 10, remember that learning a language is a marathon, not a sprint. So there's no need to do five hour cram sessions and burn yourself out. Five or 10 minutes is good enough. Remembering this is a good habit to have. If you're having a bad day, if you can't remember some grammar, it's not all over. It's just a minor bump in the road. Another thing that helps is considering the resources you use. Sticking with quick five minute lessons that are easy to finish will help keep you in the marathon. Now, speaking of lessons and resources, here are this month's new lessons and resources. First, the Ultimate Guide to Learning and Mastering Language eBook. This is a 52 page eBook that covers the learning tactics I just talked about, setting goals, staying motivated, learning faster. If you're interested in learning strategies, be sure to download it. Next, the Sport and Exercise Conversation Cheat Sheet. If you wanna talk about sports and fitness in the language you're learning, then you'll love this PDF cheat sheet. And finally, how to improve your speaking skills. It's another language strategy lesson. To get these free lessons and resources, just click the link in the description below. All right, because this is the very first episode of the monthly review, we're asking you, yes you, to submit a video of yourself speaking the language. Here's the challenge for you. Yes, everyone watching this. Record a 30 second to one minute audio or video clip. Introduce yourself in the language. Share your name, where you're from, and why you're studying this language. And you'll win a three month premium plus subscription. To submit, click on the link in the description. Sign up for your free lifetime account. Then fill out the form, attach the audio or video file, and press submit. We may feature you in next month's episode, so a lot of learners will see you and your progress and will hopefully get inspired to improve and master the language. To submit a recording, click the link in the description and follow the instructions on the page. So thank you for watching this episode of Monthly Review. Next time, we'll talk about why your worst days are the best days to study. In the meantime, submit your recording if you're brave. Like and share this video and leave a comment to tell us what language learning tactics you'd like us to talk about. See you next time, bye. Want to speed up your language learning? Take your very first lesson with us. You'll start speaking in minutes and master real conversations. Sign up for your free lifetime account. Just click the link in the description.